Welcome back to this GNN series. In this video, we want to have a look at how we can build a custom data set in PyTorch Geometric. So first, a few words about my setup here. So I work on a regular Windows machine, but I've set up WSL, which is the Windows subsystem for Linux. And this allows me to develop in a Linux environment on my Windows machine. And here I run on Ubuntu. So all the code is executed in that Ubuntu system and I find it convenient if you use the console because then you can operate like on a regular Linux machine. So recently WSL has also launched CUDA support which means I can use my graphics card now and that's something I will do later in this video when I train the model. If you don't have a GPU on your machine, you might consider using Google Colab with this code because Google Colab gives you free GPUs or TPUs and you can work in a Jupyter environment. So all of that code will be pushed to GitHub. The link is in the video description. And also check out this readme file. It contains helpful information for installing RD kits and PyTorch Geometric. And I've left another readme file in this data directory and that's where you get the data from. So I will not push the data to GitHub. So now let's see how we can generate a data set for PyTorch Geometric out of this data we've seen in the last video. And this is the HIV data set, which has labels according to the possibility to inhibit HIV. And we have all of those molecules. And I just quickly want to mention in the last video, I said we have 80,000 molecules. Actually, we have only 40,000 because every second row is empty. I missed that in the first video. So we have 40,000 molecules. And now we want to use them in a graph representation for training a graph neural network. So first, maybe let's have a quick look at the data once more in a data frame. So that's the data. And the third column is the label. And this smile string is a representation of the molecule, which we want to transform to a graph representation so that we can use it in graph neural networks. And if we have a look at the shape of our data, we see we have 41,000 molecules and the data set is highly imbalanced because only 1,400 of them are actually HIV inhibitors. That means uh, we need to consider this imbalance when evaluating the performance of our algorithm later. So now we just quickly visualize a couple of molecules so that you get a feeling for how the data set looks like. For that, we will use our decades. As already mentioned, this is a chemoinformatics library and it can be used to convert the string representation into molecule objects. This can be done with this function mol from smiles. And then using that molecule object, we can calculate all sorts of chemical properties and we can access the individual atoms and bonds in the molecule and all of that. And one function that is also available is mall to grid image. And here I just selected a small subset of the smiles values, converted them to those molecule objects. And now if I plot this, we see a grid of molecules. And those are essentially the molecules in our data set. So that's how their structure looks like. So now let's have a look at how we can build a custom data set in PyTorch Geometric. So looking at the documentation of PyTorch Geometric, there's also a section creating your own data sets. And it says that you have essentially two possibilities. Either you create a so-called in-memory data set. That means all of your data will be stored in your RAM. The other possibility is that you create a larger or more general data set. Here, the data will be stored on your machine in a specific folder. So for this video, I decided to go with the second option because I think it's more general. And essentially what you need to do is you need to override a couple of functions. So what you do is you inherit from this dataset class. And this comes from torchgeometric.data. So it's a general dataset class that contains a couple of functions and we simply extend those functions and implement our own logic. And that's exactly what I will show you in this code now. So first of all, you have to define this init function. Here you pass in root, transform, and pretransform. I will not use those two. Here you could apply additional transformations, but I will skip that. There are further examples in the documentation for this. 
So what you need to pass in is a root directory. And as it says here, that is where the data set should be stored. And in my case, it would be under data. And here we will have two folders. One is called raw and one is called pre-processed. And in raw, we put in the regular data, so the raw data, and pre-processed will be filled by the data set when we instantiate this data set class. So later when we create a new data set and pass in root equals data, it will fill this process directory and it will also create it with the data after processing it to graphs. All right, then in the next step, we need to define this property called raw file names. What we return here is the name of our data set or of multiple data sets we have. If this file is found in raw directory, which is this directory, then the download is not triggered. So there's also a download functionality for this data set because usually they come pre-shipped with PyTorch Geometric and if you don't have them, it will automatically download them. But this will not be required in our case, so I just put in a pass here so nothing happens. All right, so next we will have a look at this property. Here we can specify the processed file names. And that means if there is already processed data in this process directory, there will be no trigger of the process function. If that data is not found, then it will process the data. Essentially, that means if we process the data once, we can always reload it and this processing needs to be done only once as the data is then sort of cached in this directory. But as I will play around with the data and it might happen that I overwrite some of those data files over and over again, I've not implemented it yet. Maybe I will change this in the future. So I put in the file names I want to keep and then I can always reload them. So now let's have a look at the heart of this data set class and this is the process function. And actually it's pretty simple. All we need to do here is now construct our graph and pass our graph to this data object. So let's quickly have a look at what this data object is. In the documentation we can see that this data class expects a couple of arguments and X, for example, are the node features or a matrix of node features. And edge index are the graph connectivities in a COO format. And then we have the edge attributes. We have the label. So these are the edge features. This is the label. So the target either on a graph or on a node level. And we can pass in further things. And what we need to do now is use our smiles representation of the molecule convert it with our dkit to a molecule object and use that molecule object now to get a graph representation in terms of node features, edge features, adjacency information and the label. And then we can save that data in this process directory. And now let's have a look at the most important parts. How do we construct those node features, edge features and so on. And this can all be done now with the help of our dkits because we have a molecule object. So let's have a look at the first function. How do we get the node features? And I did some research what can be used as atom features and I got something on this page. And here we have a couple of examples what we can use as atom features. So for example, atom type, the degree, so the atom type would be hydrogen, carbon, and so on. The degree, how many connections does an atom have or number of heavy atom neighbors and so on. So we have different properties we can use to assign to each node and each edge. And that's exactly what we will do with the help of our dkits because our dkits now has a function get atoms and we can simply iterate over each atom in our molecule. So what I pass into this function is this molecule object and this is molecule from smiles. So now I have further functions such as get atomic number, get degree, formal charge, hybridization, is aromatic and those are basically the five features we will use in the following. 
So what I do, I append all of them to a list and then I create a list of lists, which is nothing else but a matrix. So this will return a matrix number of nodes times node feature size. So in the X direction, we have the node feature size and in the Y direction, we have the number of nodes and that's essentially the matrix we have. And then what I do is I convert that to a torch tensor and return all of that and we get the node features here. And I can pass them then immediately to this data object as argument X. Now let's have a look at the edge features. For the edge features, I do pretty much the same thing, but instead of iterating over the atoms, I now iterate over the bonds and then I add all of the bond features. So for example, get bond type as double or is in ring and I add that to those edge features and I append those edge features to all edge features. So I construct another matrix here only two features and then again I convert all of that to a tensor and pass it back to this function. Maybe another remark, our dkit has a pretty extensive documentation where you find all of those functions I just talked about. So you can construct many, many features out of these functions. And now let's have a look at how we get the adjacency information. For that, we will of course also use our dkits. And now luckily there is a function get adjacency matrix, which already gives us the adjacency matrix of a molecule. And this adjacency matrix now needs to be converted to the COO format. And that's what I do with this function and return it to our function here. And finally, the only thing left is the label. And the label is just coming from our data frame and is this HIV active. So if either zero or one. And additionally, I also pass in the smart string. So that's good for debugging later because we can have a look at what the original representation of the molecule was like. So, and finally, I do that for every molecule in the data set. So for every molecule, I calculate all of those features and labels and store that data in the process directory. And additionally, I added this TQDM progress bar, which tells us how far our process is. Now let's execute all of that and we can see how the data set looks like in action. Okay, now when I execute this cell, it will start with the processing and this print of processing already comes from this parent class data sets. So also the call of processing, like calling that process function is triggered by this data set class. So that's the parent class that takes care of that. All right, and then it says, done because all of the data is processed and if we have a look at this process directory we see data 0 1 and so on and now if we access the data at a specific index for instance data set at position 0 it will load that data object with this load function so torch load and then data at index and now let's investigate what we get so if i execute that we see we get the edge index. So that's the COO format. Node zero is connected to node nine, node one to node two and so on. And then secondly, we get the edge feature, uh, sorry, the node feature matrix. So we have that's in the Y direction number of nodes times edge features. And here we have the first one was for instance, the atomic number. So that would be a carbon atom, carbon, and some other atoms, and so on, and the other features. And the third one are the edge attributes, which means the edge features. Here we only had two of them, which were bond type. So we have different bond types, a single bond, a double bond, and so on. And finally, we have the label, which is our Y. All right, and that's pretty much it. So that gives us a full data set we can use in PyTorch Geometric. And I hope that this was helpful because it also took me some time to get this running. So we see us in the next video.